Boxing Gyms, G-E-M-S, Boxing Gyms. Check it out, study some of them videos there. The guy's phenomenal. His name is Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, you'll pick up a lot of knowledge there. Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. Timing is pattern recognition. Everything can be timed from punches and footwork to defending a punch. So it's essential at a high level to have multiple ways to defend one punch, especially the most used and most important punch in boxing. Blocking with the high shield is effective, yet it also blocks your own vision, which can obviously cause some issues. Plus, there are plenty of holes around the high guard. Step backs and pulls are very effective and also obviously create space between you and your opponent. Also, if the opponent happens to reach or have the bad habit of not bringing his jab hand back to his chin, stepping back and pulling can set up countering opportunities. Stepping back in straight lines could cause some issues if your opponent knows to follow you out with punches while you're moving and breaking your base. Pulling frequently can be timed as it's only a quick reactive movement that often ends with your head right back in the position it started. Catching a jab is literally catching a jab typically with a stiff, open backhand that tries to meet the jab's force. It's essential with an active guard. However, without proper spacing, pulling your backhand away from your chin against a good fighter will eventually get you hit with the lead hand hook. Parrying the jab is deflecting the jab into a certain direction. Parrying the jab can leave your opponent with delayed openings and it can cause wear and tear on the opponent's jab arm and shoulder. But parrying takes a good degree of defensive timing and if you swipe and miss, you'll be hit with the jab and potentially open for follow-up punches. Slipping the jab is simply a quick change in head slots. The best results of a jab slip is that changing head slots changes your weight distribution to whichever leg you slip to, so not only are there countering opportunities provided while the opponent's lead hand is outstretched, the punches are loaded with weight from the ground which of course makes them harder and more damaging. But it's important not to continuously slip to the same side or leg. Your opponent can eventually faint the jab and line your head up with the backhand since they already know where it'll be. Slipping to the degree that you're loading inside is also a reactive movement which requires a great degree of reflexes at a high level. A few moments later. Crawford in terms of punches left Crawford in terms of punches left Crawford in terms of punches landed. And that was might be the only one that matters so far. There's a couple more ways to deal with the jab, but I just wanted to show how a fighter can and should switch up defensive tactics in the same fight. And these are the five tactics Crawford happened to utilize in this fight. Anyway, thanks for watching. Smack that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Peace.